fingers. No. <laughs> so I have an Instagram account and you should go follow me. Shameless promo. Woo! It's at Dorothy Amlin. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> I have no idea if this tassel is even on the right side, but um, your girl graduated this past week from college, which is just bizarre. Okay, anyways, that's not in my hat. It's my roommate's old hat. Um, but I'm super excited, you guys, to be heading on to the next chapter in my life. But in the meantime, I have this video this week that I want to show you guys how to make a DIY beer pong, or in my case, a water pong table. I honestly feel kind of weird making this video right now since I just graduated and I'm not really a huge party person either, but I do love hosting on the weekends and my roommates and I have been hanging out in our backyard and like barbecuing this past week. So it was just kind of a no brainer for me when I was scrolling on TikTok during quarantine and I ran upon this DIY project. So this project took me about, I want to say, 24 hours, honestly. It was not easy whatsoever. I actually ended up painting the table twice, not once, twice, because I was a genius and did not sand the table down enough, and so the paint basically peeled off. Yeah, not fun. But I'm super stoked, you guys, and let's get on into the video. So the very first step to making a very successful beer pong table is to actually sand down your table. And so the table I use is your stereotypical plastic portable six foot long table that just like folds in half and you can carry it anywhere you want to go basically. And I bought some sandpaper from Michaels and I just sanded down the entire thing. Um, do yourself a favor and get yourself a pair of gloves and put them on when you sand your table because I did not do that and I got a blister and now it's popped and it's just not cute and fun whatsoever. But my biggest tip when it comes to standing down a table actually is that you want to use the... I don't even know the right terminology. I took woodshop back in seventh grade, but you're supposed to use the most coarse. I don't know. But it's like the roughest piece of sandpaper and you sand down the entire table and then slowly work your way down to the finest sandpaper. I don't know, but just work from the roughest down to the finest because that way you'll really get the surface nice and fly easy and it makes it easier for the paint to stick onto the table long term. But also that way it's not an uneven, half roughed up, half smooth table. Once you're done sanding down your entire table, I actually went through and brushed it off with a just normal large paintbrush. Um, just to really make sure I got all the little dust particles off and out of the way. For step number two, you want to actually paint your entire table a uh, solid white base coat. So you don't have to get any like fancy paint or anything. I simply just got white acrylic paint and I put on one full coat and let it dry and then I put a second coat on just to make sure it was truly a full white coat. And this just allows a nice even surface across of so just like when you paint your other colors on top of your table, it really just is able to bleed through as like an actual red or like a blue or whatsoever. First step number three, I then started taping um, the entire table. My big suggestion is to first start taping around the entire rim of the table. And once you get around the entire thing, you then can start taping the inside part of the table. So I since, you know, I'm using it as a water pong table, so basically I'm playing beer pong but with water, I decided to go ahead and do two X's across on both sides of the table. That way I was able to measure out the perfect triangle for where you put all the beer pong cups. Um, at the ends of the two tables. So my biggest thing is pull the tape from one side and pull it across to the opposite end, but don't completely press it down yet. Really make sure you're pulling both ends straight so the tape ends up being straight and it doesn't like swiggle in the middle or anything. And then from there, from point A to point B, at point B, once it's straight and you have it where you want it to be, you then press the tape backwards from point B to A. 
So once I made a giant X, I then found the center point of the X and I taped it straight across. That way I could vi visually, vividly, visually see where that triangle is going to be for those cups. I then took the X-Acto knife and I just cut off the two extra ends of the X that I did not need. From there, from the center part, you can honestly just tape any design you want. I've seen a wide variety of different tables and some people just want to do a bunch of different squares or triangles across the entire table. There's really no right or wrong way. Just tape it as however you want to do it. All right, step four is probably the hardest and the longest process of this entire project, which is, of course, painting the actual design. So I personally, I love Pinterest and that's where I just draw all my designs and that's where I just pull my inspiration in general when it comes to designing. So I personally went on ahead of time onto Pinterest and I came and pinned on my own private board just a bunch of pictures and like designs that I just felt very inspired by and very much was just me in a nutshell. From there, I then went immediately towards the table and just painted like a base coat, like the background color of how I wanted every single section to look like. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, honestly, like some of the sections, like triangles and squares or whatever shapes I had on my table. I, for some parts, I did do like an ombre color. I, some of them, I point, painted it, pointed it. I painted it a solid color. And for some of them, I just freehand it and did some abstract drawing or I just did some cute little swiggles because those are like in style right now, or I just left it plain white. Once all of that was dry, and honestly, at this point, I'm pretty sure I've reached only like the end of Friday. So really, essentially, I've just done the foundation work of the table. So fast forward to the next day, and now I'm going in with the actual detail work of the table that really brings the table to life, which is just painting on all the words, the fonts on top, the little details and everything. Um, one of my biggest tips for you guys, if you're like me and you're terrible at free hand drawings, what I did is I went ahead and I used a cardboard box as my buffer table underneath. I got an X-Acto knife and I printed out a bunch of template designs basically. So for one of my designs, I want to do Vogue. So I simply printed out the word Vogue and then I took an X-Acto knife and I cut out the word Vogue basically. So the inside black part where I wanted it painted on the table, I cut all those sections out. From there, I just used it as a normal template. I taped it down onto the table in the section I want to paint over and then I just painted black on top of it, just as how you would do with a template. From there, I pulled it off. And honestly, there's, it's not gonna be perfect. There's gonna be some spots that bleed through or whatever, but once it dries, you can go ahead and just go back in the smaller brush and paint it white again. Also, another tip I have is that I personally really wanted the White Claw logo on my table, but um, yeah, I am no artiste. I am terrible at freehand drawing whatsoever. So I actually went ahead, printed it out. I cut the entire thing out and then I just Mod Podged it straight onto the table. My biggest tip about Mod Podging it though is um, Rick mistake over here. You actually wanna like glue down the piece of paper first onto the table 
and then Mod Podge it over. You don't have to Mod Podge the entire table at this moment, just Mod Podge that simple piece of paper down. And of course, if you can't fully freehand everything, what I like to do, which is taking a mechanical pencil and just hand writing and hand drawing out whatever word or like art form I wanted to do. And then I went back in and painted it in. And to really clean up those lines, I just grabbed a black Sharpie and I just outlined whatever word I wanted to or whatever drawing I was doing right then and there. Not gonna lie though, some of the best details I was able to do, I was actually able to do it like just as like freehandedly, like the donuts with my Krispy Kreme sign and also the little lemons that I drew into my Ocean Avenue sign. Those were so much fun just getting to like freehand those in. So you never know, just grab a smaller brush or whatsoever and just see what happens. All right, we're finally at the last step. And so what you wanna do for the last step is to pull off all of that tape that you have on the table, just take it off. Now, make sure you don't rip it off too, too hard. You might end up peeling a lot of the white base coat off. My biggest thing is really make sure you guys, going back to the very first step, really sand down the table because that was my biggest mistake when I first started this project is that I didn't sand it down enough. So whenever I took off my tape at the end, all that white paint just peeled straight off. So really, really sand it so that white paint could just stick onto that table. Thankfully, my second time around, none of the white paint actually peeled off, which was fantastic. But once you get all that white um, tape, not paint, that white tape off, go ahead and grab yourself some Mod Podge. I personally went with the glitter Mod Podge because I just thought it'd be super cute. And I went ahead and with that entire container Mod Podge, I just picked it up at my local Michaels. I was able to give two full coats over the entire table. So once again, earlier, if you guys end up Mod Podging like some kind of logo or artwork down on your table, make sure you do that coat. And then on top of that, you can easily just paint over and the entire table is going to blend in. You're not going to notice that there's a little bit more Mod Podge on one section or the other, if that makes sense. But once you put all that Mod Podge on, it's just a protective coat to make sure that as you're playing the game, nothing like damages or spills over the paint. So once you have that done, just let it dry and you're all set to go. So this is basically how my table turned out. I'm like super duper proud with how it turned out. I just love every little thing about it. I had the Alfred coffee and tea logo located on one side of the table. And then I have White Claw on the opposite end of the table. And in between, I have little things that I love like Lululemon. I have ocean waves because of the beach and summer weather. I have matcha latte painted in the middle of my table because I love matcha. There's also Krispy Kremes because I love donuts and just a bunch of like cool like fonts and logos and designs that I love and just some random free-handed artwork. So I honestly, I hope some of you guys who are watching this end up trying out and painting your own table because I think that would be so cool and if so go ahead and tag me hashtag the and stylist when you post it or just tag me on my Instagram at Dorothy and Lynn or at the and stylist whatever works but I hope you guys that this really inspires you it's my notebook <laughs> but I really hope this um video inspires you guys during this time to just be creative and just do some arts and crafts and you never know. Cause like, for example, this table, I can use it whenever I'm hosting an event. And if I don't want to show the design on top, I can just put simply a white table um, cloth on top and no one will see what's underneath. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.